The bus groaned up Grapevine Pass, and then we were coming down into the great sprawls of light. Without coming to any particular agreement, we began holding hands. And in the same way, it was mutely and beautifully and purely decided that when I got my hotel room in LA, she would be beside me. I ached all over for her. I leaned my head into her beautiful hair. Her little shoulders drove me mad. I hugged her and I hugged her and she loved it. I love love, she said, closing her eyes. I promised her beautiful love. I gloated over her. Our stories were told. We subsided into silence and sweet anticipatory thoughts. It was as simple as that. You could have all your Gingers and Beverly's and Ruth Gullions and Luann's and Carolyn's and Diane's in this world. This was my girl and my kind of girl's soul. And I told her that and she confessed she saw me watching her in the bus station. I thought she was a nice college boy. Oh, I'm a college boy, I said. The bus arrived in Hollywood in the gray, dirty dawn, like the dawn Joel McRae met Veronica Lake in the picture Sullivan's Travels in a diner. She slept in my lap. I looked greedily out the window, stucco houses and palms and drive-ins, the whole mad thing, the ragged promised land, the fantastic end of America. We got off the bus at Main Street, which was no different than where you get off of the bus in Kansas City or Chicago or Boston. Red brick, dirty characters drifting by, trolleys grating in the dawn, the hoary smell of a big city in here. My mind went haywire. I don't know why. I began getting the foolish, paranoiac idea that Beatrice, her name, was a common little hustler who worked for the buses for a guy's bucks and that she had regular appointments like ours in L.A. where she brought the sucker first to a breakfast place where her pimp waited and then to a certain hotel to which he had access to his gun or whatever. I never confessed this to her. We ate breakfast and a pimp kept watching us. I fancied B was making secret eyes at him. I, I was tired. Goofy terror took over my soul and, and it made me petty and, and cheap. Do you know that guy, I said? What guy? I, I let it drop. She was slow and hung up about everything she did. It took her a long time to eat and smoke a cigarette. And she talked too much. I kept thinking she was stalling for time, but this was all utter nonsense. The first hotel we had hit had a room and before I knew it, I was locking the door behind me and she was sitting on the bed taking off her shoes. I, I kissed her meekly. Better she'd never know. To relax our nerves, I knew we needed whiskey, especially me. I ran out and fiddled all over 12 blocks until I found a pint of whiskey for sale at, a, of all places, a newsstand. I, I ran back, all energy. B was in the bathroom fixing her face. I poured one big drink in a water glass, and we had slugs. It was sweet and delicious, and worth my whole lugubrious voyage. I stood behind her at the mirror, and we danced in the bathroom that way. I began talking about my friends back east, and I said, you ought to meet a great girl I know called Vicky. She's a six-foot redhead. If you came to New York, she'd show you where to get work. Who is this six-foot uh, redhead? She demanded suspiciously. Why are you telling me about her? In her simple soul, she couldn't fathom any kind of glad, nervous talk. I, I let it drop. She began to get drunk in the bathroom. Come to bed, I kept saying. Six-foot redhead, eh? And I thought you was a nice college boy. I saw you in your lovely sweater, and I said to myself, hmm, ain't he nice? No, and no, and no. You have to be a goddamn pimp like all of them. What, what on earth are you talking about? Don't stand there and tell me that six-foot redhead ain't a madam, because I know a madam when I hear about one, and you, you're just a pimp like all the rest. Everybody's a pimp. Listen, B, I'm not a pimp. I swear to you on the Bible I'm not a pimp. Why, why should I be a pimp? My only interest is you. All the time I thought I met a nice boy. I was so glad. I hugged myself and I said, hmm, a really nice boy instead of a pimp. B, I pleaded with all my soul. Please, listen to me and understand. I'm not a pimp. An hour ago, I thought she was a hustler. How sad it was. Our minds, with their store of madness, had diverged. Oh, gruesome life, how I moaned and pleaded, and then I got mad and realized I was pleading with a dumb little Mexican wench, and I told her so, and before I knew it, I picked up her red bumps, and I hurled them at the bathroom door, and I told her to get out. Go on, beat it, I said. I'd sleep and get over it. I had my own life, my own sad and ragged life forever. There was a dead silence in the bathroom. I took off all my clothes and went to bed. B came out with tears of sorriness in her eyes. In her simple and funny little mind had been decided the fact that a pimp doesn't throw a man's shoes against a woman's shoes against the door and doesn't tell her to get out. In reverent and sweet little silence, she took off all her clothes and slipped her tiny body into the sheets with me. It was brown as grapes. I bit her poor belly where a cesarean scar reached clear to her button. Her hips were so narrow she couldn't bear a child without getting gashed open. Her little legs were like sticks. She was only four foot ten. She spread those little legs, and I made love to her in the sweetness of the weary morning. Then two tired angels of some kind hung up forlornly in an L.A. shelf. Having found the closest and most delicious thing in life together, we found...